This video is the second part of a four part series about the four fundamental forces of nature. And I'm not talking about earth, air, fire and water. I'm talking about gravity, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force and electromagnetism. These are the forces that tell the matter in our universe how to interact with itself. Each force is associated with a carrier particle, gauge bosons if you will. Today we discussed strong nuclear force. As suggested by its name, the strong nuclear force is the strongest of the four forces. And strong it is. About 10 to the 38 times stronger than gravity. The strong nuclear force is so strong it's able to operate at scales much smaller than gravity. It can hold matter together at subatomic scales. The strong force holds most ordinary matter together because it confines quarks into hadrian particles such as the proton and neutron. In addition the strong force binds neutrons and protons together to create atomic nuclei. Most of the mass of a common proton or neutron is the result of a force field energy. The individual quarks provide only about 1% of the mass of the proton. How does this work? To understand how let me introduce you to quark. Quarks are subatomic particles. There are six different flavors of quarks. Up, down, top, bottom, strange and charm quarks. Take two quarks, one normal and one anti-quark, which is the antimatter counterpart of the quark, and you make a mason. Take three quarks and you have yourself a baryon. Baryons and masons are called hadrons. Examples include the proton, a baryon made out of two up quarks and one down quark, and a kaon, a mason made out of one up quark and one anti-strange quark. There's a whole list of possible combinations for baryonic and messianic hadrian particles, which I will link in the description. So now that we know what quarks are, how does the strong nuclear force affect them? It's the strong nuclear interaction that binds these quarks together to form hadrons. Without the strong nuclear force, the hadrons would fall apart and the universe would be just a mass of subatomic particles. But the force is also strong enough to confine the hadrons into atomic nuclei. Atomic nuclei rest in the core of atoms. They consist exclusively out of protons and neutrons. The number of protons defines which element the atom is. For example, 6 protons is carbon, 35 protons is bromine and 105 protons would be dubnium. Then the number of neutrons defines which isotope of the element you have. There are also electrons which say something about the ionic charge of the atom, but ions and isotopes are something for another video. As I said, the number of protons defines which element the atom is. But the strong nuclear force, though strong, has a limit of hadrons it can confine into a nuclei. The strong nuclear force defines the number of stable elements that can exist in our universe. For our universe that number is set for 83 stable elements. As soon as the number of 83 protons is passed, the core becomes unstable. All elements with 84 or more protons are unstable, or in terms of nuclear physics, radioactive. You might still ask though, if you can only have 83 stable elements, how in the name of science does the periodic table count 118 elements? And you're correct in asking that, except that the strong nuclear force can hold those nuclei together. If only for a really, really short amount of time. Element 118 for example, which we have dubbed Organason, decays in less than a millisecond. While element 84, which is only one more proton than the limit says, has a half-life of over a hundred years. Radioactive decay is a very interesting topic I'll have to cover in more detail another time in another video. So the strong nuclear force is clearly a very very important law in the universe. And just like gravity, this law has an enforcer. The strong nuclear boson, more commonly known as the gluon. The gluon is far more easily to detect than the graviton. Remember that crazy experiment with the one light year thick lead wall on one meter distance on the surface of a neutron star? This time all we need is some positronium. Positronium is a system of an electron and a positron particle. Positrons are the electron's antimatter counterpart. Therefore these systems are highly unstable and explosive. Antimatter annihilates matter upon contact. So collapse the positronium system and the positron and electron will annihilate during which they may produce what's known as a three jet event. The similarities between positronium and meson particles are striking. The only difference being in quarks and electrons. But if you were to do the same with a quarkonium system, a quark and its anti-quark, or a mason consisting out of two of the same quarks, though one is matter and then one is antimatter, let's say I put a charm quark and its anti-charm counterpart in a system. This is called charmonium, and yes, that sounds ridiculous. But collapse this mason, and the three jet event will produce a gluon. This is the way German scientists found the gluon back in 1979 West Germany. I hope this video was educational to you and you learned a bit about nuclear physics today. Next up in this series is the weak nuclear force. In the meantime as always check out the other links in the description for more science. And see you in the next video.